Hey everyone, Scruffy Golden here. One of my goals in putting out these videos is to give information that's either not out there or is at least hard to find. So I had not planned on creating a video about installing a cargo net. I mean, how hard can it be, right? And look, it's not that hard, but there are still a few things to consider. For starters, the net itself needs to be a Goldilocks size. It can't be too tight, it can't be too loose. And I bought a few that I had to return before I found the right one. And as careful as I was, I still ended up making a mistake. In fact, I have the first visible scar on a trailer I've ever created. Not good. As a result, I decided to make this video. It'll be a quick one, but it'll help you get a good cargo net. It'll give you some things to consider when you install it on your vehicle or project. And if nothing else, you can check out the mistake I made and at least avoid making the same one. So let's get into it. So why a cargo net at all? Well, cargo nets actually have tons of uses and part of the installation gotchas depend on your particular use case. I've seen cargo nets slung loosely across the ceilings of trailers and boats, and I've seen them strung you know, tightly across open spaces like this to prevent things from bouncing and falling out. And in this particular case, I've been dreaming about this moment for years. Now, I'm not exaggerating. For years, when I go camping, I have kept my clothes in a duffel bag, which would sit on my bed during the day, but then needed to be moved to the truck when I slept on that bed at night. Of course, the next day, if I went anywhere, I would need to move the duffel bag from the truck back to the trailer. Sometimes it's just the little things that get on your nerves. And frankly, I am sick of what I call the duffel shuffle. Getting the optional shelf in this new hiker trailer allows me to keep my clothes easily accessible, but off the bed itself. Now, in a previous video, I recommended latched doors on the cubby, so why not install latched doors on this space? Well, I don't know if Hiker Trailer even offers latched doors on this space, but even if they don't, I'm not afraid to build the doors myself, so why didn't I do that? Well, there's a couple of reasons. This is a space that I reach into and out of multiple times a day. You're getting clothes, you're layering up, you're laying down, and not only do you just want your packing cubes to be able to go in here freely, the idea of reaching into this space just sounds like a knuckle scraping nightmare. Plus, I want to be able to see where everything is, right? And a cargo net's a great solution for that. I can quickly attach it when I'm traveling, like that, and that prevents everything from flying around the cabin, but I can also remove it quickly and easily reach everything in here once I get to my camping destination. So to me, it's the perfect solution. So with that in mind, I went with a cargo net that is strung somewhat tightly across the opening. And strangely, one of the hardest parts of the process was finding a cargo net with this magic size, this Goldilocks size. We're looking for two dimensions that stretch into place snugly, but not too tightly. If it's too loose, the packing cubes, will, and whatever you put on the shelf, will find their way out. And if either of the dimensions are too tight, it will be difficult to put the net onto the hooks and might even rip them out of the shelving. To make things more difficult, different nets stretch different amounts, and it seemed like every time I found a net that fit in one dimension, the other dimension didn't work. Now, I ultimately reached out to the hiker trailer community to see if they had found anything that had worked for them. And as is usually the case, I received tons of great suggestions. So this space is 58 and a half inches long and 11 and a quarter inches tall, edge to edge. What I ended up getting was a marine grade cargo net that is 52 inches wide and about seven inches tall, and it stretches 10 to 18 inches. I'll put a link in the description below in case you find this net helpful for you and your space. So now that I had my Goldilocks size cargo net, it was time to put in the hooks. Now, before I ever screw something permanently into the trailer, I try to use command strips instead. It only took a few minutes to realize they weren't going to hold up under this kind of tension. So that left me with screwing the hooks in permanently. Now, the first thing to consider is whether the screws you're working with have the potential to go through the wood and out the other side. The interior of the hiker trailer is covered with beautiful three quarter inch birch plywood. The edge pieces that cover any exposed edges of the plywood are also at least three quarters of an inch thick. Now the screws for these hooks extend just under 11 sixteenths of an inch, so you should be able to safely avoid driving a screw through the back of the plywood. 
the plastic itself will also help prevent overdriving. Having said that, I always use a manual screwdriver rather than a power tool when dealing with such small margins. So I started with the corners and was met with my first serious question, which was how close should I put these hooks to the walls? If I put them too close to the wall, I would have trouble getting around the door jam when trying to attach the net. But if I attach them too far from the wall, it would create a gap that would at best be unsightly and at worst would allow things to escape from the space. So after dry testing a few different possibilities, I ultimately opted for putting the corner hooks one and a half inches or about 3.8 centimeters from the wall. So that gave me a horizontal position for the corner hook. And after eyeballing things a bit, I came to the conclusion that the screws look best at about 3 8 inches up from the bottom of the top cubby. Now you can put yours wherever it feels right for you, but this is how I thought through my measurements. So when it came to installing the bottom corners, I wanted them to mirror the top corners. So I started by measuring one and a half inches from the wall or about 3.8 centimeters. Having measured up from the bottom of the top cubby, I almost made the mistake of measuring up from the bottom shelf. But don't forget that to hold the net, the bottom hooks need to face down and the screw is not centered on the hook. So if I had measured up from the bottom again, the hooks would actually hang below the edge of the shelf. Not only would this have been ugly as heck, but I can guarantee you that either me or the dog would break or rip one of these out sooner or later. So to avoid this, I actually measured down from the top of the edge or shelf this time, and this squared up the hook perfectly with the edging itself. Next, it was time to install the middle hooks, and this is where I made a mistake. Thinking that the hooks should be evenly spaced, I did the math. The walls are 58 and a half inches apart, the corner hooks are one and a half inches on each end for a total of three inches. So the space between those two corner hooks is 55 and a half inches. I divide that space into three sections. So 55 and a half divided by three gives me 18 and a half inches from screw to screw. I dry fitted the hooks at 18 and a half inches to ensure that everything looked good and made sure the cubby doors would open. Well, not so fast. With everything seemingly perfect, I tried opening the cubby doors and realized that these doors want to fall flat and flush against the shelf. My hook was preventing it from doing that. Now, that didn't bother me much, and I thought about leaving it this way, but it's usually best to give everything its full functionality that it was designed for, and I sure wouldn't want anyone watching this video to make the same mistake. So I remeasured the top middle hooks and moved them a little more towards the center so that they did not interfere with the cubby doors, and now you can see they, they sit flat and flush against the shelf. This new measurement turned out to be 21 and 7 eighths from the corner screws, or about 55.5 centimeters. Now, if you found the information in this video helpful or useful so far, or you simply think somebody else might avoid making this mistake by seeing this, please hit the like button below so that this video can spread to more people. I would appreciate it very much. Thank you. Now, as you can see, this left me with two exposed screw holes on my beautiful new interior. So I thought about hanging a picture of Miss Fuzzy Britches over the hole here, but that's not exactly practical. So I asked Hiker Trailer what they consider the best way to patch holes, and they suggested wood dots. Wood dots are just color matching stickers that you place over the hole. Applying them couldn't be easier, but I'm not sure which is more obvious, the sticker or the exposed hole. Of course, wood putty is what I'm most familiar with, but I haven't always had the best luck in matching the color. Still, I'm inclined to think that would look best. What do you think would look best? Please let me know in the comments below. With the exception of the two extra screw holes, I'm really happy with this result. The net stretches just the right amount and provides just the right amount of coverage over the space. When I'm ready to hit the road, I can throw my packing cubes on the shelf and install the net quickly. Upon reaching my destination, I can unhook the net completely and have full access to everything on that shelf until I'm ready to hit the road again. No more damn duffel shuffle for me. I have more extensive videos on the way, but until then, live without compromise, and I'll see you out there.